Good morning everybody, Calm Biker here. Off out on a Saturday morning with a little bit of a butterfly in the old uh, belly. This is this bike's first MOT that I'm just on the way to, to do. I don't think there's anything wrong with the bike. Um, if you don't know what an MOT is, if you're not from around these parts, uh, MOT basically is a mandated test. Government says that after the third year of a bike's life, or a car's life, he has to go in for a test, you have to pay a bit of money, and somebody basically looks around your bike, makes sure it appears to be safe. I'm not sure how useful it is, I'm sure it picks up some things, but um, as you may have already seen from a random clippage video, uh, it doesn't pick up lots of things. So there was actually a, a clip that I rendered into a video the other day that isn't actually uploaded yet, but probably will be uploaded before this, of somebody at a petrol station. It was on the day that I popped out with Tosh so that he could ride the, this bike and the Z Thou. And while we were at the petrol station, we saw a car being filled up and just pouring petrol at the bottom. And the woman who was driving it said, um, I only had my MOT yesterday. And that kind of thing just isn't checked. So they check a few things here and there, the kind of general safety things. And then once you've had that MOT done the first time, every year you have to have it done again. Though weirdly nowadays, they've just changed the laws. And I think it's after 20 years, you never need to have one again. So presumably the logic behind that is that once your car or your bike gets to 20 years old, well, it, it just stays safe, obviously. It can't, can't get dangerous again, can it? That's, yeah, makes no sense. If you, if you fail the test, by the way, you, you have to have that wrong thing put right before you can carry on riding your bike for the following year. I've had an MOT before that failed on the car. But it was uh, it's my little VW Polo. I've got the, uh, the the triple. It's the only triple I own. VW Polo 1.2 three cylinder. Um, that really it's a proper just a runabout. I I don't like it. I think it's intensely boring. But I do think pretty much all cars are intensely boring nowadays. But it it, it just it's never been anything that I've had any confidence in its reliability, its quality or anything like that. So I took it in for an MOT and I took it to Volkswagen and it was for an MOT in service and they promised me when I bought the car that it came with a free service after the first year and then when I tried to book it in they pretended they had no record of that. So I just argued with them and in the end they said alright fair enough. So that, that gets my cynical senses tingling as well. Uh, but before I ever go for an MOT, I do the basic check, so tyres are alright, oil fluids are all at the right levels, nothing's hanging off, um, and headlamp beam looks about right. I haven't got a thing for measuring a headlamp beam accurately, but, you know, checking the look about right. And I did all those things, and I took the car in, left it there for its service, and I got a call saying, oh, there's a problem with your headlamp adjustment. Um, yeah, one of your headlamps is too low and we can't adjust it <coughs> because the adjuster's broken. Now as I said, I checked that, they were both at roughly the same level before I went. The one that they said was low, when I checked it was actually a little bit low so I adjusted it upwards and it adjusted fine. And then they claimed they couldn't adjust it. so. I went in and the beam was way off by then, it was right at the bottom of where the, uh, the limit was. And I tried to adjust it and they were right, the adjuster was actually broken. So the real cynic in me might say, did they do that on purpose? The slight cynic in me might say, did they break it by accident? And then not tell me and just tell me that it was off and it needed fixing. Um, you know. But it had failed and what they said was, to fix it, you're going to need a new headlamp unit, which will cost you £160. 
So I said, don't bother. And I took it home. And uh, I just swapped the adjuster from one headlamp to the other. Tiny little cog, about that big. Little plastic cog. And when I opened it up to see it, the plastic cog, two teeth were missing off the one that was broken. It led me never to go there again. I don't trust them anymore. I, I want some of my... Uh, trust has been rattled anywhere if there's an alternative I won't go back to the first one uh, so I'm going today to a guy that I pretty much do trust and I'll say who they are I don't like doing kind of random plugs but I will talk about things that I have paid for and I'm happy about or I have paid for and I don't like I will do kind of honest reviews so I'm going to a place called A&M Motorcycles that's in Hull so I'm hoping today he's going to do me a good service on an MOT and that all will be fine and dandy and I can carry on riding it for another year. Now this is the point where I've got to remember how you get in there because it's quite well hidden away. There it is. Oh he's got a nice sign there. Well, as you can see, all passed. Bike's got another year of riding in it. Woohoo! £29 lighter. And now I can go and tax the bike because it needs taxing now as well. But they wouldn't let me tax it because it didn't have an MOT. All these clever interconnected systems. I don't know. So thanks for watching everyone. Ride safe. And I'll talk to you all again soon.